Hi everyone, my name is Lori McDermott and I am with thewifeexpert.com. I always try to get good guests on my show. This is considered my show. And sometimes at the last minute they cancel. A lot of times I get a wife whose husband's come home and she's like, I want to talk. And then just before we're going to record, she goes, yeah, I don't know. What do I do? I'm worried. And fear sets in and they cancel. So sometimes I cancel. And sometimes like today, I'm going to go, you know, I have a lot to share with you. I talk to probably 50 people every single day, even on Saturdays. I don't want to, but if someone needs my help, I will help them. Sundays too. Sundays I'm a little bit more strict, but again, if someone needs me, I'm going to help them. That's just, I I promised God a long time ago that I was going to be here for you guys. And so when these things happen, I, I, I help. I, it's just in me. Anyway, I want to thank you for being here. And I want to thank you for subscribing to my channel. This channel is to help families grow and to stay together. I am a family advocate, a marriage advocate. I believe in marriage. People that go, no, that guy over there is better. It's you. (laughs) There's a lot we could be doing. And I don't want you to give up. So if you know anyone who's struggling in their marriage and they don't know what to do, tell them to come to me. Come to thewifeexpert.com. Go there. There's lots to see. And if you want to talk to me, I'm. you can find me. You can actually have a conversation with me. It's not that hard. Just click a few buttons and you'll get there. Anyway, I want to tell you guys, I have this book. This is called My Grateful Book. It literally took me two years to write. Why? Because I wanted it so good. It's my first one. And I've got a few more coming out. So please watch in the notes or when you come to thewifeexpert.com. This book is amazing. If you have a husband who's left or you are just struggling in your marriage, this thing is amazing and it's positive. My new one is going to be humorous, but it's the opposite. So it's coming. We'll talk about it later. Um, Anyway, email me if you have questions, but I'm going to go ahead and read some things to you. So let's start with today. Hold on. Is there anything else I wanted to tell you? Yeah. Always look at my notes below. So today I was on a phone call with a wife. And she was telling, so this wife has been working with me for a while and I, we talk about what she's going to do. And then I talk to her like a week later and I'll be like, how did it go? And she's like, well, I didn't tell her. Why? Why? We talked about doing something and you decided not to. She says no, because of fear. Fear will keep you hostage. You don't want fear. What are you afraid of? If you think today you're 45, 50, and you might die by the time you're 80, You got 30 years left. What are you afraid of? Take chances. Say things. Work on yourself and be the best person that you possibly can be. Because you only have 30 years left. What does that mean? 30 Christmases, 30 birthdays, 30 New Year's Eves, 30 Thanksgivings. That's not a lot of time. There's no reason to be afraid. Ever. So this woman and I were talking about something today. We were talking about manipulation. And we talked about her saying something and she goes, If I tell him that, he's going to think I'm manipulating him. And I said, who cares? He's gone having an affair with some lady that you know who decided that having an affair with your husband was a good idea. She stole your husband. And you're afraid to say something because your husband's going to think you're manipulating him to do what? And she goes, well, he's going to think I'm manipulating him to come home. So let me get this straight, right? Hi, husband. I'm saying these things to you because I'm manipulating you to come home to your family that you promised you were going to be there with them forever, to your kids, to your wife, who you've loved for 32 years. And this is a bad thing. Like he's going to go to you. I'm not coming. You're saying that to me because you're manipulating me. And so she laughed. It's, who cares? He's having an affair. How can he be mad at you for manipulating him when he's screwing your best friend? Doesn't make any sense. And then on top of it, so let's say she goes, yeah, I am manipulating you. I want you to come home. And he goes, okay, I'll take that bait of manipulation and I'll come home. Now he comes home because you manipulated him. And then how does it work out? He knows you manipulated him. He's not really there because he wants to be there. Hmm. He's going to leave again. You don't want that. He doesn't want that. So it's just a ploy. When a man tells his wife, when the man is having an affair and tells his wife, you're just trying to manipulate me to come home. 
You just say, oh, wait, I'm not going to tell you what to say. This is the part where if you want to know what I would say, click there. I'm going to leave a link below because I don't want to tell you what to say. Um, this is what I teach this stuff. I will tell you what to say, what to do, how to think, what to feel. I will tell you everything to say to him that will make him go, Ooh, she, she's really smart and I can't screw with her anymore. I better get my crap together or the woman I left is going to be gone. And that option won't be there anymore. I teach that. So I'm going to leave a link below. I'll make a separate video on this. I just thought of this. I'll make a separate video called Manipulation. If you want to watch it, click the link. Otherwise, join my videos. I have a video program with 211 videos that will teach you everything you've ever wanted to know. I had a guy tell me um, the day of my group call, he texted me later and said, you know, I'm realizing, and I know his voice because he's kind of ponderish, you know, I'm realizing everything you taught me, I can actually use in my life with my coworkers, with my boss, with my mother. And I was like, yeah. So I teach you to be a phenomenal person today to get your spouse back home for your family and your kids and to help everyone around you see how it's done. Because this is how people operate to have good families that get passed on from generation to generation. That's what I teach. The lessons you learn from me, you can use with your work, with your friends, whatever. It's, it's brilliant. So, and I appreciated that man and what he said, because he's right. It's not just about your marriage. It's about everything. Um, okay. So this is funny. Yesterday, remember I talked to a lot of people. I had a call from a lady who told me that, and I knew this because I talked to her last year. She's on my program. I never talked to her though. She never calls me directly and she doesn't come to my group meetings twice a month. So I, I don't really know how she's doing. But anyway, she called me and she's like, I need to talk to you. And she reminded me her husband had an affair during their marriage. I think they've been married 25 years. He had an affair for eight years of their marriage. And then he left that affair and they kind of connected and then he found someone else. And he's been having an affair with that woman for four years. This affair is different, as she said. This affair, he spends time with her. He goes over there every Wednesday and every Sunday. And I said, how long has this been going on? She's like four years. And I said, how do your kids feel about that? And she goes, not good. My 15-year-old's really upset and is telling me to leave him. And I said, honey, this isn't a midlife crisis. This is not a crisis. This is your husband being a compulsive cheater, which is like being a compulsive alcoholic, which is like being a drug addict. He's got something wrong with him that he thinks that having another sidekick, another woman in his life is going to make him feel better all the time. Not just for a crisis because someone died or something happened. This isn't a midlife crisis. This is a problem. And nothing will change until you do. So we had this long conversation and she's like, oh, I thought I was just supposed to sit here. And then we looked into a little bit more and she wasn't even just sitting there. She was yelling at him and telling him how mean he was, how he was running off with this lady. So she was, the wife was creating chaos inside the family home and he was running off with this lady. In fact, right now, as we speak, as I'm recording this, which you probably won't see it for another month, he's on vacation with that lady. It's not so. So I told her she's got to get rid of him. She has to tell him, listen, you have choices and I have choices. This is my choice. I don't want to be in a marriage with three people. If this is what you want. <sighs> so we had a chat about that, which again, that's on my program. I teach that. Don't be with a man who is a compulsive cheater. Don't be with an alcoholic. You can be with an alcoholic all day long. Just don't complain about it. These are your choices. If you're with a man who's a drug addict and a drinker and he doesn't have a job and he's not living his life and your kids are suffering and you're enabling him, you got to look at yourself. What am I doing? I teach women to stand. I do not teach women to enable. There's a difference. And if you have any questions about that, reach out to me and we can chat about it or jump on my program. Okay, here's another one. A wife not on my program shared with me. This is what she says. I have finally started, here, I got to put my glasses on because I'm old. I have finally started to tell a couple of my trusted family members about my husband having an affair with one of my employees. It's horrific. I'm like, can't you just fire her? And the wife is like, no. I asked my lawyer, a lawyer of the company, you cannot be fired from your job if you're having an affair with your boss's spouse. I, I, I was like, really? 
Like, there must be something you can do. So she's working on it. But anyway, in the meantime, she says, I don't want many people to know, but yesterday I told my aunt and my aunt was horrified because her husband left her four years ago. And this is what she wrote back to me. And I'm reading you this because this is what I would have told her. I'm working with her. But this woman, her aunt, shared with her something that I tell her, which I'm like, yes. There's another person in your life who's saying something that I say. When this happened to me, zero. There was no one in my life who said what I wanted them to say. You know what? Just be calm. This will work out. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. I had to go research it and figure it out myself. It took forever, but I figured it out. That's what I teach. Anyway, this is what she says. Her aunt said, oh, honey, I am so shocked. The first important, most important thing I need to tell you is that this is none of your fault. No matter what he tells you or how much he blames you, that you are the course of the reason that he left you and is having an affair with your employee. It took me a long time to realize that I wasn't at fault. The things he is saying about you are to ease his own guilt. You have done nothing wrong. You may not be a perfect wife, but you can fix that. In the meantime, about him blaming you. You've done nothing wrong. You are a wonderful person and you have to believe that. Also, you do not need to make excuses for your husband. I did that to my husband. None of it was true. He did what he did because he's an idiot. And sometimes men and women can be idiots. I remember feeling a bit of shame about everything as if I was the failure. And I imagine you are feeling the same way. You are not a failure and you have no reason to feel shame. Easier said than done, I know. I'm now four years into this with my own husband who lives around the corner by himself. He is sad. He's depressed. He's devastated by everything he has done, but yet he still comes over for dinner. And we laugh and we have a lot of fun on the weekends. Love and life can be very cruel and very confusing at times, but never give up and never let his mental crap bother you or dim your light. Yay! I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Okay. So here's another one. As you know, oh, this is me talking to you. As you know, okay. So most of my wives that I coach, when I invite them on here, it's because of fear and they send me some other things. And so I want to read to you what this one woman said. Hold on. Um, This woman, her husband didn't speak to her for four years and they lived together. And so she says that he didn't speak to me for four years. And I'm like, uh, Ah, how's that possible? They have kids. They're both living in the same house. He might not speak to her the way she thinks he should, but she says he hasn't talked to me in five years, four years. And uh, okay, so here's what she says. He never had an affair. He just struggled inside his own head. And yesterday she texted me and she said, he's back. He's coming out of his crisis. This is what she said. My husband is in a completely different headspace than he was before. Like the clouds have parted. He still seems to struggle with his identity coming to terms with who he is and what he wants to be at almost 60. (laughs) Teach your kids, teach your kids to know who they are today. Make sure your children like themselves and like who they are and like what they're doing. Make sure they know they have choices. They can go try to be a doctor, go 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 to residency. And then suddenly they go, yeah, I want to be a comedian. Okay, go ahead. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Be free. Teach your kids to be free to do what they want to do now. After you get married and have kids and make a family and a kingdom, your choices are limited because now you're in a different role. You're a king. You're a queen. You're taking care of the kingdom. You're no longer like, this is about me. I'm going to go find myself. What? The king is leaving the kingdom? Where is he going? He's going over there. Okay. Bye. It's really difficult. So make sure you teach your kids to have freedom now. Give them the space to do that. Okay. Um, He's working on himself and he's no longer blaming me or anyone else. He's doing the work inside himself. He stopped his complaining and he stopped blaming me. He still sometimes has this avoidant personality and doesn't want to have to explain what happened during the four years he was gone mentally because he doesn't understand it himself. I do think it was his trip away from home 
back to see his mother that snapped him out of this. His own dad left the family when he was a 10-year-old. And I was mad at his mom for not being better to raise a better son. Yet I did as you told me, because I did. I told her, you cannot be mad at his mother. You got to let that go. And I worked really hard. And so the wife said, I worked really hard to get past how much I hated her. And I instead grew to love her who she is anyway. I truly believe my recent love to her is what may have given her the power to speak her own mind, this is her mother-in-law, to her other son, my husband's brother, who is also having an affair. So her brother-in-law has been having an affair and left his own wife and three small kids. And her, her mother-in-law, so basically mom-in-law, my, my wife, her mother-in-law has two boys. One is married to my wife. And then the other one has a wife and kids. Both of them are screwed up because of what happened a long time ago because of the dad leaving the family. So my mother-in-law was so, so brave. She told me what she said to my brother-in-law in front of my husband when they both were at home. She told me, she told me she told her cheating son, of course you will leave your wife and kids for some other lady. How could you be a good man and father and husband when no one showed you how to become one? Years ago, you hated what your own dad did to you. And now today you are doing the exact same thing. You are doing exactly what your dad did to me and to you and to your brother so long ago. And now you're repeating the same pain that you had onto the people that you love the most. Yes. She says, are you going to turn around and face your issues and how to be a real man to your wife and kids? I know you deserve to be happy, but what about the woman you promised to be happy with and your kids? What about them? Didn't you promise to be with your wife and solve these issues and hard times together instead of running away? Show your kids what it looks like to be a real man. It's time to learn how to be a real man. A real man embraces life's challenges and stands strong to love, protect, and adore the mother of his children. Let me read that again. This is what she said. I love it. A real man embraces life's challenges and stands strong to love, protect, and adore the mother of his children. My mother-in-law called me to tell me she knew what she said had affected both of her boys, and they now know exactly how she feels about both of their behavior. Imagine having two kids that are both having struggles because your husband left a long time ago. It's tough, man, tough. This is what we do. This is what I do. I love it. If more moms and dads spoke up like that woman did to her two sons, we would have a different planet. But that's not what happens. Most of these wives will call me and I'll be like, well, what what does your husband say about him having an affair? And the wife will tell me, well, she said to me, like, well, he's not happy. As long as he's happy, that's all that matters. And I'm just like, oh, dear Lord, because that creates a rift with the wife. And the wife's like, why won't you parent your kid? This is why he's screwed up now. So we can't change people. We can't. All we can do is love them anyway. And the wife that I've been coaching has been strong enough to share things with her mother-in-law that gave her mother-in-law the permission to speak up to her sons. You have the power to make that happen in your life. Just by learning what I teach and then doing it and becoming it and others will see you and they'll start to understand what you're doing and it will become them. I don't, I'm not teaching anything bad. I teach everything good. And it makes families happier and children grow up happier and without anxiety. And they learn how to love. If you don't teach your kid how to love, where is he going to learn it from? The local pervert next door? I don't think so. The teacher at school? Doubt it. You. It's all you. Okay. Back to the women's story. So she says, my husband, so the woman that is my client. So she says, my husband came home shattered, but open to me, almost like his fantasy of living alone and free of responsibilities was all gone. He was now wanting to be the man he knew he had to be for my kids. 
and me. Thank you, Lori, for showing me that my husband's midlife crisis inner dialogue is more of a personal tug of war between what he knows himself to be and how he knows he needs to be, as well as how other people see him. His choices are his, and all of them have nothing to do with me or us. I will continue to do what you teach me, and the rest is up to him. So in marriage, is marriage, ready? Here's marriage. It's like a cocoon. You get inside the cocoon with your husband. Here it is. Are there storms coming? Hell yeah! Do all the old people sit in the back at a wedding ceremony going, you have no idea what's coming. <laughs> you have no idea what the storms are coming. The people getting married are like, oh no, we're never getting divorced. These bad things won't happen to us. That was me, right? Here we are. Crap will happen. All oh, you don't know what it is, but you got to get with your partner and be like, all right, we got this. We aren't leaving each other. We're going to figure this out. Here comes that storm. Whoops, here comes another one. While this storm is happening, another one's coming up on top of it. Then a hurricane, then a tornado, then maybe a little sunshine, then more stuff comes. And then like random cow manure will just start falling from the sky and you're going to go, wait, what? 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 What's happening? And the goal is stay connected. Stay connected. Don't, don't let go. It's hard. It's freaking hard. And I'm sure if you knew what was coming, you might not even got married. But here's what I'm going to say to that. This is a big but. I think marriage is a petri dish of challenges that your soul wants to crush. And you get in there and things start happening. And part of you wants to just exit stage right. But if you stay, the lessons you will learn will go with you. Because I believe we live on past this life. Which is probably why I'm always happy. Because I know I'm going somewhere else. I believe we take these lessons and it makes us into better people for wherever else we, forever, for wherever else we are going. That's what I feel. So learn these lessons in a marriage, make it work, figure it out. Last night I was really pissed off at my husband. He said something to me and I was like, ah, and I went upstairs and he's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to bed. I'm good. And then I thought about it. I'm like, we had plans to watch this one show. It's called Louder Milk. And I love it. Super funny. Louder Milk. So funny. So I said, he's down there watching it by himself. I'm going to go down there. And I went downstairs and he looked at me and he goes, thank you for coming down again. And I was like, I'm sorry, it was my ego. So you have to do those things. You have to be a better person. Okay. That's what I teach. So be resistant. If I wouldn't have gone through all those things with my husband, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be here right now teaching this. And many of these people that I have gotten back together in their marriages wouldn't be where they are. And their kids wouldn't be where they are. It's up to you to change what's happening in your family. Okay, I had a lady ask me about her husband, and this is what she says. She goes, my husband always acts like he can't stand me, but I have had the thought in the back of my head. He picks someone else over me and our kids, and I just can't get over it. Is he going to come back or no? And this is what I wrote back to her. Because she's not on my program. So, but once in a while, I'll respond to people that just randomly text me or call me or email me. Um, Honey, the man had five children with you. He loves you. He just doesn't know it yet. The devil came in and showed him the greener grass and said, come to the dark side. Here's a better life. It's the apple, Eve in the garden, right? Which your husband hasn't said no to. He hasn't said yes to it either. He's in limbo land. But it's the temptation and the idea of something better than what he has today. It's the, what if this was better? What if this was better? I don't know. So what do I do? Nothing. He does nothing. And he waits for something to happen. And that's the time for you to do what I teach. And there's a whole process to that. But I said, that's where he sits in temptation, which in itself is its own horrific hell because he's not living his life. He's just sitting and everything keeps moving on without him. You are the better option. You are always the better option. His family, 100% is the better option. His kids, it's a better option for them. Better for his wife and better for his soul. If you pull out and bail on your husband, your husband will never recover. I know that to be true because I've interviewed thousands of people 
thousands and thousands. And this is what they've told me. And this is what they've said about other people in the dynamic when a wife goes, Boop! this guy never survives. The same way the other way. Why? Why does that happen? Why, when a woman pulls out, does a man suffer, even if he's having an affair and thinks he wants to be with the other woman? Because the mom is the unspoken leader. The woman is the stealth bomber of her family. Mom is the temperature. Mom is the major person to make love happen inside of a family and a marriage. Mom. It is a huge responsibility. Huge. No one will thank you. No one will give you money. No one will pay you or tell you, good job, mom. You're amazing. Not yet. When they become adults, when your kids become adults, you will see it. When your husband gets through the storm, it's his storm that he's bringing on you. When he gets through the storm, he's going to be a better man. They always are. One lady told me years ago, she goes, my husband was like five different people over the course of our marriage. And she named them all, which is on my video course. It's true. We change. We change, we get better. We can change and get worse. But if you have a partner who's better, staying better and working on themselves, your only choice is to mirror that other person if you stay together. And your husband might be like, I don't want to be- I don't want to get better. The dark side is so much better for now. But it never lasts. The dark side gets ugly and nasty. And things happen there that you don't even want to know or talk about. Anyway, so I, here's what I tell people. I will thank you. If your husband comes home, I will thank you. Your kids will thank you and your life will be better because of it. Don't ever give up hope. Don't ever give up thinking and feeling and wanting your husband back in your family. But you need to become the person that you want to be married to. What does that look like? You ever thought about that? Be the woman that your husband would want to be married to, that you would want to be married to. Be that lady. Be that guy. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little session. I know it's short, but I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad you've watched this. Please, please, please make sure you subscribe and please come back and see me. And if you need me, reach out to me. I'm not scary. People often call me like, I'm so nervous to talk to you. And I'm like, why? I'm just a person. There's nothing special about me. I just figured this stuff out and I want to teach it to you so you know it too. And I'm here. Let me know when you need me and I'll see you soon.